Hello, sports fans, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to another edition of Scott Sports 101. This is my traditional Christmas Day podcast. And finally, for the first time in two years, finally, I have my, I am live here at the Hoyle House, home of my sister and brother-in-law, Jen and Eric Hoyle. And I've got my two guests in the background for the first time back on in two years. Uh, my brother-in-law, Eric Hoyle, and his cousin, Aaron. And that little, this, and that, uh, Face you just saw on the screen was my nephew Jay Hoyle. Yeah, baby, that's off the screen. That's Jay Man. And so we're gonna talk. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and that was Audrey. Uh, Audrey Hoyle. You only love Chrissy's youngest, si- yeah, uh, no younger sister Chrissy's daughter. But uh, we're gonna talk uh, Browns. We've got some Cavs. We've got a lot of NFL action, and the uh, and the passing away of a Steelers Pro Hall of Fame legend Franco Harris. We get to all that. But first, here is today's Scott Sports 101. Week 16 NFL football uh, well, weekend trivia Hi, question. Peter. Do it, Scotty. Come on, man. Do it, Who baby. was the last team to beat the Browns in a playoff game in the 20th century? This was before the Browns moved to Baltimore to, as you know, become the team that is now known as the Baltimore Ravens. I'll have the man, answer. And this is going back pretty uh, far here, man. Later uh, in the uh, podcast. Eric, I'm nervous about this, man. You might have to help me. This <laughs> I'm going to guess. Who was the last team to beat the, who was the last team to Brown before? Oh, man, I don't know. Well, okay, hold on. Let, yeah, let's just yeah, let's yeah. let it play out here. I'm not going to reveal yeah. it just yet. Right. Let's let but, it play. Um, it was a not, it, it was brutally bone chilling cold down at First Energy Stadium yesterday, but it things did not bode well. They had, uh, they got, Browns got out to a good start, but were not able to close it out in the fourth quarter to come back to those as they lose to the, uh, New Orleans Saints by the final score of 17 to 10. And the Aints, Scott, the Aints. We call them the Aints. We yeah. don't call them the Saints. Which uh, the Browns fall to six and nine, and uh, they and have officially eliminates them from playoff contention. Scott, we have one more guest, Peter, back there. Uh, we got Peter. We got Peter and, back here. And Peter, and that is our friend of Chrissy's. That's Audrey's daddy. Uh, Audrey, That's Audrey's yeah. daddy, baby. The professor, and Peter. That's Browns just. Re- and uh, Deshaun Watson really uh, he he uh, did uh, he drove Cleveland into the Saints 15 in the final minute, but was sacked in the fourth. Now they started out with a 10 nothing lead and had had that lead at halftime, but in the second half they the Browns defense was very disappointing. At Miles Garrett said they just could not put anything together or uh, and just do anything. What like happened that. was in the second half real quick, I mean, all of a sudden the Saints just like woke up and go, and it felt like they were like, hey, exactly. we're not playing in 50, 15 below. We're playing at the friggin' Pontiac Silverdome. And they just started running up and down the friggin' field. Like they, they forgot exactly. that it was freezing cold. I mean, well, it was unbelievable. But Nick Chubb uh, had a really good day yesterday with the uh, Browns with him having 92 yards and 24 attempts. Did not score a touchdown though, but Scott, really, man, let's face it. Let's face it. Chubsy, Chubsy, the workhorse of the Cleveland yeah. Browns. Period. And Amari Cooper had six receptions, 72 yards. Watson was 15 for 31. Uh, carries an attempt, 135 yards, no touchdowns. They did have one interception. But it was a tip, though. It was a tip. Yeah. Game, right? It was They've tip. got the Washington Commanders coming up next week as they just play this thing out for pride. And they don't have a pick in the first round of the draft. And it's not too early to start talking about that, but. Guys, this just this game just did not bode well yesterday for the Browns. It just did not. And I mean, it was boring. I mean, obviously it was freezing cold. I mean, yeah. they were running the ball. Nobody wanted to throw the ball. I mean, I mean, I give I give uh, you know props to the fans that. And you know what? We you know what? Through that. That's right. And you know what? Kudos to the Cleveland Browns management letting yes. all the fans that were up in the upper deck. Come down for the second half or whatever it was. Good for them because there was hardly anybody there to begin with. They should have yeah. let them do that at the beginning of the game. Well, we've got anyway. a lot of action today. and A game that just ended moments ago in Miami where the Green Bay Packers upset the Miami Dolphins by the final score of 26-20, to 20, which was quite a shock when I saw this. Did you see the score of the the Rams Denver game? Yes, and the, they are the Rams are up on Denver twenty four to three, and and we both have oh. Den, we both have uh, I, got the, Den, I got the Rams. Oh yeah, you got the Rams. I got the Broncos. Just, right now, just we are both eight uh, five right now because of the big show. Just because right. of Baker. Wow. Well, you know what? Green Bay really needed that game, didn't they, Scott? I mean, yes, I mean, they I did. Mean, you know, they're 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 just yes. trudging along, man. I mean, they're falling apart. They really are. And uh, I'm gonna just turn some pages here. I wanna. 
Uh, uh, move on. Shows become a circus. Yeah, and uh, oh, Scott, you kill one. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, last night on Saturday Night Football, it was a very special game at Pittsburgh, marking the uh, uh, 50th anniversary of the Immaculate Catch by uh, Franco Harris in 1972. They retired his jersey, number 32, and uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers were down 10-6, but came back in the fourth quarter and beat the Raiders 13-10 at Azekir Stadium in Pittsburgh. And as you know, this past week, we've lost Pittsburgh Steelers legendary Hall of Fame running back Franco Harris at the age of 72. Harris was known for making a miraculous grab in the AFC Divisional Playoff game uh, against the Oakland Raiders, who are now the Las Vegas Raiders, in 1972. Uh, Harris' death uh, came days just before the Steelers uh, were set to retire his number 32 jersey and celebrate the 50th anniversary of the uh, Immaculate Reception at Esker Stadium. And Harris was the Steelers... Uh, uh, draft pick in, in the first round of the 1972 draft. He was the 13th uh, pick, and he made it a, an immediate impact, rushing for 1,055 yards and scoring 10 touchdowns in his, in his first season, which was his rookie season, and uh, winning Offensive Rookie of the Year honors from the Associated Press. In 1975, his most productive year, uh, his uh, – yeah, he rushed for 1,246 yards, second to O.J. Simpson, and scored 10 touchdowns. And check this out real quick, Scott. I got a little tip because this is just such perfect timing with this podcast. Today. Yes. Because I just happened to watch the Franco Harris football life on the NFL Network today when I was getting ready to come over here. And check this out. Now, this was a very interesting little fact about Franco Harris. So he was he went to Penn State. He got drafted by Pittsburgh. Yes, he did. And he, he started. But then but then he fumbled a couple of times early in his career. And Chuck Knoll was like, hey, man, we can't have that. So they so he benched him. And Franco Harris was like, you know, it, he said it was such a big jump between college and the pros. And he was like, you know what? People were, he couldn't believe the veracity going from college to college to pros. Exactly. And he's like, you know what? He's like, I got to toughen up here, man. If I keep doing this, I'm never going to play. And he just decided one game. He's like, you know what? I'm going to be a total badass. I'm never going to let Chuck Noll take me out of the game again. And after that, it was all history, he, man. Exactly. He started to tear it up. He died two days before they're, they're going to retire. Yes. And, uh, oh, uh, his career that, total, right? 354 rushing yards in Super Bowls, remains a record today. Now, this is, I want to do a little trip. In the final seconds of, of the December 23rd, 1972 AFC Divisional Round playoff game between the Steelers and the Oakland Raiders, Pittsburgh was trailing 7-6 to six when quarterback Terry Bradshaw threw a pass downfield uh, and it uh, rico, uh, rico chatted off uh, a yeah, collision ricochet. between – ricocheted, uh, thank you, for off a collision between Steelers running back uh, John uh, uh, Fua and uh, Raiders safety Jack Tatum into the hands of Harris, who just scooped up the ball and who was several yards behind and corralled uh, the ball, as I said, before it, grazed, before it grazed the ground. And amid the chokes, and Harris uh, sprinted 60 yards into the end zone for the game-winning score. And Scott, let me let me just ask this to you real quick. So me and Eric were talking about this earlier. So watching that play, the immaculate reception, the actual play, we were saying that if that was in the, today's NFL, yeah. we, there's no way they would have called that a catch. No yeah, way in hell, right? So. right? They would have had that on camera. Yeah, that would have been on 57 yeah. different camera angles. That would have never happened. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, and so. uh, the Steelers never had a losing season. In all 12 years, Harris played in the NFL. A professor. Yeah, professor. Yes, exactly. you're right. A you're professor. absolutely right. And uh, – the uh, at uh, halftime, the Steelers president Art Rooney II announced that the franchise was retiring his jersey. They honored him at halftime and during pregame festivities before the game as well. And several players from the 1972 team, including Mean Joe Green, were on site and on hand to celebrate uh, Harris and the anniversary of that immaculate reception. Now, how about this real quick, Scott? How about this real quick, Scott? So I'm going to do – I was watching the football life thing. How about this? Here's a little interesting tidbit. At the Pittsburgh – when you walk into the Pittsburgh airport, right, as soon as you walk into the main concourse of the, of the Pittsburgh airport, there's two statues in that and entire you're, airport. You're right. You're one of them, right. One of them is a statue of George Washington, of all people. And guess who the other statue is? Friggin' Franco Harris. Harris. In yes. The, in the position of him catching that immaculate reception. Now, I mean, now if that's not – 
I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, seriously, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're a statue next to George Washington of all people. I mean, Franco exactly. Harris, good job out of you, brother. Good job yeah. out of you. And Harris won four Super Bowls with the Steelers in the 1970s. Uh, Harris was also a nine-time Pro Bowl running back and Hall of Fame. Uh, in addition to his son, Harris is survived by his wife, uh, Dana uh, Dokmanovich, and his sisters, Daniela, Marissa, and Luana, and uh, his uh, brothers, Giuseppe and Michael. My thoughts and prayers uh, go out to the Harris family and friends during this difficult time because I know how hard this is for you. Yep. But each day we'll get a little uh, 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 better. I know the NFL and all the media sends their thoughts and prayers uh, as well. And I'll tell you what, real quick, after watching that, after watching that Franco Harris um, football life, I'll tell you what, that guy, he he was one of the nicest NFL players. And he was. He was that, way, I mean, one he of the was the nicest, nicest frigging guy. I mean, watching that, I'm telling you, everybody loved him. He is an absolute saint. He is, I mean, he's philanthropic. I mean, he's just the, the nicest down-to-earth guy that you will ever see. Yes, he is. Blessed, he really is. And even though we hate Pittsburgh, I love that yes. guy. Right? He is a, he's just a great guy in general. Uh, really is. Well, we'll get to the Cavs in just a sec. But right now, I want to... It's time to reveal the uh, answer to today's Scott Sports 101 NFL Football Week 16 uh, weekend trivia question. Who was the last team to beat, a, to beat the Browns in a playoff game in the 20th century? Any, any one of you guys want to take a shot? This, this was before they moved to, moved to, to yes, Baltimore? Yes. Okay, I think it was the Houston Oilers. That's my pick. That's my guess. Well, Houston Oilers. Eric, what about you? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, we'll say the Raiders. Okay. Peter, what about you? Uh, probably have to go Steelers. You, uh, actually, Peter, you are correct. And if you out there said the Pittsburgh Steelers, go. you are correct. In the second round of the 1994 playoffs, the Steelers beat the Browns 29-9. to uh, The following season, the Browns finished 5-11 and and then left Cleveland to become, as you know, the mm-hmm. Baltimore Ravens. And we, and we had to wait four years to get football back till 1999 when the new uh, Browns showed up. And I'll have the... Uh, I'll have another question on my next podcast, so stay tuned for that. I got a funny little tidbit about the last game at Cleveland Brown Stadium. One of my managers at work, he was actually at the game. Oh, and him really? And, yeah, and him and his friends were one of the ones that were tearing the bleachers out of the dog pound and taking some of the pieces. <laughs> yeah, off. That's... He's got part of the bench in the dog pound in his house. How about yeah. that, man? Uh, yeah, yeah, he really does. They're stealing it. I mean, they, they... Well, moving on to the Cavs right now, I want to get this in. After a 118 to 107 loss to the Toronto Raptors Friday, the Cavs will get ready to take on the Brooklyn Nets uh, tomorrow at home at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. And the Cavs have been doing pretty well this season. Now they're 22 and 12 on the year in third place, a game and a half in back of the Celtics for the top spot in the Eastern Conference. And uh, boy, Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland have really put up I a mean, big number. I mean, Scott, when was the last time? Other than LePuke, when he when LePuke was here, when, when was LeBron the last was... time that we had a player like Donovan Mitchell who could literally yeah. take over a, one player could take over a freaking game? I mean, exactly. he's done that multiple times this year. Bobby Sura. Oh, that's oh, I forgot about Bobby Sura. That's right. Thanks. He did that one time. <laughs> I think it was the October nineteenth, nineteen ninety six game. Yeah, that. that's it. That's right. How could I forget that? Thank you, Eric. Yeah, Appreciate no that. Well, they could be. There's been a questionable rumor going that oh the time I'm trying, yeah I'm that they've been might be looking whether or not they should make a trade for because the the fifth starter could be the killer who was with the uh, Washington Wizards right now Who's that? and I think it's Kyle uh, Kyle Corver yes who was with uh, the Wizards right now and but the question is should oh, they oh, do oh, it. Powder. And I'm not so sure about that. I'm not sure if they so should do I, it. No, I was wrong. That Kyle Corver guy was the guy that played on the Cavs. Like yeah, Kyle. I'm sorry um, about that. I think it's a Kyle. It's my uh, bad. But I know it's the one with the Washington words, but the, <laughs> I don't know if that would be such a good move for the Cavs. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, how would they pull that off? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how are they going to pull but that off? But we'll see what uh, they yeah, do if they can get the win against the Nets tomorrow night. They're doing great, though, man. I mean, yes, they are. I wasn't expecting it to be like this. I mean, yeah. I was, I'm, Donovan Mitchell is, exactly. uh, is an absolute yeah. happy surprise, man. <laughs> I mean, that's and that guy's Kyle, is at 7 p.m. on Bally Sports Ohio. Uh, well, that's just about going to wrap it up for my for the Scott Sports 101 uh, NFL football 
and uh, NBA and Christmas and uh, Week 16 Christmas Day podcast. Uh, enjoy your time with your family and friends. Merry Christmas, everybody. And uh, I'll have another podcast later on this week. <laughs> but until then, always remember, be a team player each and every day in every way possible. So long, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Two one. I'm done. Is that?